This video isn't going to show anything about the hardware because the hardware is largely stable, but I do want to show you a little more about how I've been incorporating the um, file system code in the SD card into my fourth interpreter. So um, I've already got fourth loaded up here, so let's just start it. All right, so um, uh, last time I showed you that I can uh, uh, just sort of load basic files and incorporate them just as if I had typed them from the keyboard. Um, and that's a pretty common way that modern fourths work. Um, but since there isn't really a file underlying operating system or file system here, um, what I've decided to do is implement a, a, a more classic uh, fourth mechanism, which is the blocks and buffer interface. And this sort of, again, reflects the history of fourth, where fourth sort of really kind of wanted to be the operating system for the computer and just have unfettered access to, to the disk. So let me just show you things working, and in particular show you the um, editor, I built a screen editor, um, and then I'll explain a little more about what's going on. So we start off by um, mounting the disk, and that initializes it and loads the boot records, and it says that tells us that it's Mikes2, which is the, um, the label on the disk. Um, and then I tell it... Um, a file I want to use um, as my blocks file. I'll explain more about that later. Um, and uh, and then we can just go. So what I'm doing is uh, I'm using one of these files as uh, simply a repository of disk blocks. Each block is one kilobyte in size. Um, and so you can ask to... Uh, uh, list the contents of a block. So there's a block that has so that's um 16 lines of 64 characters, and that makes up 1024, 1K. Um, so you can list it and see what's there. Um, and we could uh, load that file, and so that will give us access. It'll define those words. Um, so load, and then now I can type table, which is that word that I've just defined that prints out a multiplication table. Um, and if I want to change how that works, I can um, just say that I want to edit that block, block number one. So now I'm in a screen editor. Um, and so the traditional fourth used to use a line editor. Um, I'm not going to be as traditional as that because that would just be a pain in the ass. But um, here I've got a, a screen editor. Um, it uses sort of Emacs-like key bindings because that's what I use most of the time. So let's, um, let's change this so that we can... Uh, extend the multiplication table and have it do some slightly larger numbers. So we make some changes, um, leave the editor, have a quick look, and, um, and sure enough, those are the changes. So let's do, uh, let's throw away the words so that we're not um, confusing, cluttering up the, the dictionary and reload it. Now when I do twice, um, oops, sorry, not twice, uh, now when I do table, um, I get I get numbers up to nineteen, so it's it's loaded my changes. Um, so um, so let me show you a little bit more about what's going on here. And to do that, I'm going to uh, add a new file. Um, this is the remember the old way of uh, of loading code. So I just say include to get a new um uh, some new code in. Um, and in particular, that's given, giving me this uh, command called buffers. So here's how things work when um, you do uh, uh, blocks in forth. So I'm using a file, and the particular file I'm using just now is that one called scratch1.block that's down, to the down at the bottom, and you see that it's 32k long. Um, and basically, that I'm just, um, I access blocks and those blocks come out of that file. And I just inter give commands like list and edit and load in terms of blocks. Um, and fourth is working to try to keep some number of those blocks in memory at any given moment, and it puts them into buffers. So here's my list of buffers. I've got um, six buffers labeled zero through five. And right now, most of them are empty apart from buffer number zero, which has a block in it, and that's block number one, and that's that block that we've just been looking at. Um, so when I did one list, that's that block. And so if I was to, uh, for instance, um, list the contents of block number two, 
um, which has some different stuff, not very much, or block number three, which has you know just some very random crap. And then I look at my buffers, and you'll see that buffers one and two are now also occupied, and they have the um, they have the, the the blocks that have been loaded. So buffer one has block number two, and buffer um, two has block number three, and so on. And as I add, as I load more uh, blocks, um, it will uh, put them into buffers. And of course, eventually um, the buffers are full. There's only six buffers here, and so then it starts to rotate around and it tries to find old buffers to get rid of um, so that um, I just keep on acting in terms of blocks but the buffer interface works. However, there's one little wrinkle here. So you remember that when we loaded um, when we loaded this, uh, this block or looked at this block at first, um, we made a change. We changed the variable here from, um, from uh, 13 to 20. Um, and so I want to make sure that that block gets written back. So right now I've only made that change in memory. Um, fourth doesn't know automatically when a block has been changed. You have to tell it that you want a block to be changed. And you do that by using the, um, the word update. So when you do update, it says the block that I most recently touched, most recently looked at, um, is the, should, um, has been changed, and so it should be updated. So if we look at buffers now, it has that little star by the one, and that means um, there is something about number one that has been changed. So that will produce one of two effects. I can um, issue a command, flush, which will um, write back all changed buffers back to the um, block file so that, um, so that the file system is up to date with the changes I've just made. Um, it will also, if I just um, keep on loading blocks, when it finally has to um, rotate around and throw away the contents of block number zero, it will automatically flush that ch flush those changes out. So it won't throw away any changes that I've asked it to um, preserve by using the update command. It won't throw those away. Um, so that's but let's me just just to be sure that everything's okay. I'm just going to say flush. Um, and now if I check buffers, you can see the star has gone because that buffer is no longer dirty. It's no longer um, inconsistent between what's in memory and what's on the, on the disk. So this is a pretty sort of primitive way of doing things and it's kind of old fashioned. Um, it harkens back to the history of fourth and most for most people, most modern fourths um, don't really use this very much and they just use um, streaming files like like I did when I um, included the, the code that executes the buffers command. Um, and I can still do that, um, but because I don't really have an underlying file system, I don't have an ed another editor on board the, um, the computer, I wanted to be able to do something so that I could write and um, edit and update and run code all entirely self-hosted on the computer. And that's what this lets me do now that I've got this editor. So, um, so even though it's pretty primitive and old-fashioned, I'm pretty pleased with it.